Hi everyone and welcome to your second lesson in my belly dance course for absolute beginners. Let's get on with it. In our first lesson, we started from the absolute basics. I taught you about good posture and some of the great isolations that we use in belly dance and I taught you our core moves and went over them in great detail. Now, if you haven't seen that lesson, I've put a link to it below, so do check it out if you haven't seen that yet. But it's okay, you can carry on with this lesson because I will be going over those moves again. I'll also be giving you some really great new moves, inc including beautiful belly dance arms and some lovely juicy hip work. So, let's start off by doing a warm-up. And in this warm-up, we're going to include the circle that we learned last time, if you remember, with our feet apart and a nice horizontal hip circle. We're going to start off just with a nice little gentle step and a touch and step. Just nice and small. Shoulder, shoulder, 
Make sure that your knees are soft. Make sure that your tail is pulled down. So if you have an imaginary tail, you just pull it down. Very importantly, we want to pull up through the psoas muscle. Yeah. So if you imagine you've got big double zip, like you've got really tight jeans on or something, and it's got a double zip here, and you want to zip up. Yeah. So we have our feet apart, toes pointing forward, knees nice and soft. We're standing with good posture, and. What we do is we have our right hip coming forward, we're going to take that hip round to the back, the other one comes forward and going round to the back. If you like, you can imagine that you have a pencil here and you're drawing a sideways figure of eight, yeah, or an infinity sign, yeah, so that eight is going this way. So if you imagine you have a pencil around your nether regions, that's what we're doing. Okay, so knees nice and soft, right hip forward. And remember, when we're doing this figure of eight, we keep the, both knees nice and soft, and we're aiming to keep that figure of eight nice and level. It's not going up and down like this, yeah? We're keeping it as level as possible. That's the great thing about having a hip scarf, actually, because it helps you to see that and that your hips are level. Now you don't have to have anything fancy, you can just have straightforward, as I have today, I've just put a scarf around my hips. Yeah, but it's really good just for showing you what's going on. Forward figure of eight. This one is a little bit trickier for some people. We have both knees bent again, we have the hips starting at the back, so this is my right hip starting at the back. It's gonna go out, it's gonna come forward, and can you see that this left hip is now at the back? So my, I'm gonna put my brain into my left hip and my left hip is gonna go out and forward. A lot of this is actually putting your mind into a particular bit of your body, that will really help. So put your mind into your right hip, say right hip is the back, right hip, think of that right hip going outwards and coming forwards. Think about your left hip now coming out and forwards. And we're going forwards and forwards. Yeah, can you see what's happening here? So one hip takes over and then the other one. You want to try and make that movement as smooth and continuous as possible. 
Always thinking about pushing out before you come round, out and forward, out and forward, out and round. The other thing that uh, over time you want to try and um, do is to keep the upper body nice and still and the hands kind of still here down, framing your hips, yeah? So you don't want the whole body to be going round. So one more time, backwards figure of eight, knees nice and soft, right hip comes forward, that hip is going to go round to the back first of all, out and back. Out and back. So this, to be honest, is the figure of eight that most people find the most natural, yeah? The easiest one to do. So we're going back and back and back. And can you see that both knees are nice and soft as I move, yeah? Forwards figure of eight. And stop for a second. Get your brain into your right hip. That hip goes out and forward, out and forward out and forward, always pushing out and out before it comes around and that will help to get that um, forward figure of eight working well for you. While we're here, let's just remind ourselves of good practice for our circle, which we've already done in our warm up. Yeah. So here again, we're keeping, our, we want to keep up nice and pulled up through the psoas here, through these, these muscles, so we have our double zip going on. And we are circling around, aiming at keeping these, um, these hips level. And you're thinking about that circle going outside the body. So it's not, like, um, it's not coming in like this, it's going outside the body. Yeah? Okay, let's do those and then we'll do our next figure of eight, which is an upwards one. Okay, so we've got our feet a little bit apart, our knees nice and soft, we're well zipped up with our, um, our double zip, shoulders down, ribcage level, here we go, backwards figure of eight, and taking it back, and back, keeping those knees nice and soft, and the hands just stay low by your hips, so we're getting used to the idea of keeping those arms and hands nice and quiet. Yeah. 
is quite a tricky one. Yeah, so this is a much harder one than the others. It's an upwards or a vertical figure of eight. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating yeah, a sort of you know, like an infinity sign here or a sideways figure of eight going upwards. How exactly am I explaining that? Not very well. But can you see if I draw it on my on my the front of my body, you can see what I'm doing. Now, this movement is, I'll be honest, this movement is easier for people who've got, for women who've got pear shape like me. Yeah? If you've got big hips, hips, this move is much, much, much easier. If you're more of an apple shape or a little bit more of a boyish figure where you've got a slender, slender hips, yeah, it can sometimes be a little bit harder. So just be aware that if you find it's quite tricky, it might just be the hips aren't as big as mine, and so therefore it'll just take you a little bit more time getting the core coordination right. You'll get there, undoubtedly, but just so that you know. If it feels a little bit trickier to do, um, that might be why. Now what I'm gonna do is if I just go back to make sure you can see my feet, I'm pushing my hip out to one side. I'm then going to lift up the heel on that side, yeah, and I'm going to pull this hip up and I can feel my, my flesh sort of pinching here, yeah. I'm filming this just after Christmas, so I've got a bit of extra flesh here and, and uh, yeah, I can definitely feel that, I can feel those extra pans there. So I'm lifting up, I'm now going to shift my weight over to this side, can you see my hip going out? This heel is going to go down and then the other heel is going to come up and that is going to lift up my hip. Now. It's the lifting of the heel that helps that hip to come up. Yeah, can you see? Because it just literally squashes that hip upwards. The important thing is that we push the weight outwards. Yeah, we push this hip outwards. And then we lift up the other one. So we're coming up, shift, and down. Up, shift, and over. Up, shift, down. I think that's probably a better word to use. Up, shift, down. If you want to, if you like to visualize things, you can visualize having an ice cream scoop on each hip and you're scooping ice cream direct onto your waistline. Yeah? <laughs> Which is what a what a crazy idea. It's the last thing we want to do. We wanted to go fire our mouths first of all, but there you go. That's where it ends up anyway, isn't it? On our waistline or on our hips. So we're scooping up and in. We scoop up and in. Yeah? Scoop up and in. One more time. I have my weight out here. I'm lifting that heel. I'm coming up. I'm shifting the weight and I'm going out. I'm sorry, I mean, I'm shifting my weight over to the other side. I lift up the heel on this side and I shift. Now, the danger is, particularly if you try and go too fast or if you don't have your feet wide enough, you need to have your feet fairly wide apart to get this working, particularly um, you know, if you're finding it difficult, just try having your feet a little bit wide apart. You obviously don't want to be out like here, but you definitely don't want to be in here, yeah? The danger is that you'll start doing it the, other, the, the wrong way, yeah? So you really have to think about pushing that hip out, lifting up, bringing it in. Shift that, push that hip out, lift the heel up, bring it in. The other thing to watch out for is that your feet will probably want to come inwards like this. And then you'll come in and you'll come in and you'll find that you're coming in closer and closer and it'll be impossible to do it. And that's definitely when you're going to be starting to try and go outwards rather than coming inwards, which is why I say start with your feet nice and wide and also just check down, make sure that those toes, the, those, those heels aren't coming inwards, you know, that your feet aren't turned out. Keep your toes pointing straight forward, yeah, as you do it, and then you should be able to get it going. Let's just do that for a few, um, yeah, just a few bars. We're not going to spend ages on it. We'll do more next time. Remember, bring out a new video every week, so make sure that you hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and the notification bell, and then you'll get the full course. So I'm starting with my feet fairly wide apart. Not too wide, but they are well apart. Knees nice and soft. Always think about good posture no matter what we're doing. Let's shift the weight out to one side. Lifting up that heel, we're going to come up, up and shift, up and shift. You'll feel that pinch as you lift up and then shift, shift the weight over. Push that hip out this side. Coming up and we go back. Coming up here, out that way. Up and in. Up. You see how my heel lifts up each time? 
add some arms next week. We're going to have our feet close together, we're lifting up the heel, remember lifting up the heel is what enables you to do things with your hips. So we're going to lift up that hip and it's going to drop down, 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 down. That is our classic hip drop. We're going to lift up the opposite arm, so we always have the hand that is closest to the hip that's working, we have that hand down. And we can come forward, little double banks forward, and then back, and what I'm doing is I'm keeping my upper body facing to the front, so I get a good little workout in my waist, which is no bad thing. Then, heels down, bend both knees, we're gonna squeeze one buttock, squeeze the other, squeeze, 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 that gives us a nice little sharp hip um, snap, and also a little bum workout, which is no bad thing. Um, we're gonna have our feet apart, and we're gonna to push to one side, push to the other side. Another opportunity for a bit of bum squeezing. As I push to the right, I'm gonna squeeze my right buttock. So I push to the left, I squeeze the left one. So I'm going push and push. And I'm gonna do some doubles as well. I'm gonna have my arms up, I'm gonna do doubles, and I'm gonna go put, squeeze, squeeze, and like push, push, but squeeze, squeeze. Really just think about squeeze and then it'll work. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Just letting those hips go side to side, and we just follow with the arms, just for the fun of it. And I think we'll do some little elbow punches as well, why not, just to mirror what's happening with those hips. We'll also do some little shoulder isolations, yeah? We're gonna have the shoulders coming forward, back. Now, when you're doing this, you wanna keep the hands nice and still, yeah? It's not the whole, arm going. So you want to keep the hand still and just be isolating the shoulder. So you need to keep it fairly relaxed, yeah? Don't try and kind of punch it. It's going to go forward, back, forward, back, and then we'll also go forward, up, back, and down. So hip drops and some shoulder isolations. One other thing that we'll be doing when we're going to be, when we do our hip snaps, we're going to add an arm pattern. The arms are going to come up to the side, they're gonna come across here. They kind of come back here and down. So they're coming up to the side, across. Can you see how I'm crossing them? I'm coming back. Now what I'm doing is I'm pulling my elbows back a little bit and then I'm just coming down my body here. So in order to go down like this, I need to pull these elbows back, yeah? That's a real classic little arm pattern that I use when I'm doing these uh, moves now. Just watch the desire to lift your arms all the way up. You don't want them to be doing that. You're just going up halfway, cross, out, and down. Okay, let's get these hips and these shoulders working. So, I've got my... Arms up, push from the 
too much but just a little way and you can also try putting your weight a little bit backwards which should probably make them tighten up a little bit you want to make sure whatever happens that you keep these knees moving and that you keep them nice and relaxed and that you don't tighten up your thighs here yeah you don't want to go really really tight and fast you want to keep it as relaxed as you possibly can our shoulder shimmy if you remember our shoulder shimmy we're keeping that nice and Small, so this is a little shake of the top half of the body. Keeping my arms nice and quiet, I'm not punching away here. And I'm trying to keep the rest of my body fairly still. You'll get a little bit of movement, of course you will. The idea is that you're thinking really just about the top half of your body just giving a tiny little shake. Can you see that my shoulder's hardly moving here? Yeah, so don't punch away. And then our last one, is where we have both knees going together. So they're going bounce, 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 bounce. And um, to stop the girls bouncing up and down too much, you can squeeze your buttocks together and go a little bit faster with this one. Yes, yeah? so I've just tightened up my bum there, getting a little bit faster, and that just keeps it fair, keep, keeps me a little bit more still, and we can roll the arms around like this, making a window. So let's have a quick show me. Okay, let's 
last of all, let's create some beautiful arm movements. We're going to do two things. We're going to do turning hands and we're going to create classic snaky arms. Now I have actually got a special snaky arms video that you can have a look at. Um, I'll put the link to it up here. Um, if you want to really work on these beautiful snaky arms, but let's go through it now. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm taking my arm out, my elbow is going to lead upwards, and then I'm going to stroke as I come down. Yeah, so I imagine that I'm, well, first of all, this arm goes outwards, and I'll keep this shoulder down, and then I stroke downwards, and it's like I've got a beautiful velvet curtain out here, so I'm just stroking, or a beautiful tall man, or woman, whichever way. You prefer going out here, up, and down. Now, as I say, if you want to really go into this movement, you can have a look at my special snaky arms video and see it in even more detail. And then I have one arm coming up, and then the other one. Yeah, can you see how the arm goes outwards? The elbow is leading upwards, and the elbow naturally just drops down and leads downwards. So up, and change. So this is a move that you may find will come naturally to you, although it's not an easy move. But if you find it a little bit tricky, have a look at that other video. I spend a little bit more time teaching that there. Now the other form of snaky arms, I have my arm coming up and I stroke as I go down. It's as if I'm painting a wall. I come up and I stroke as I go down, like a paintbrush. Up and down. Let's just do one of them. Up and down. Then the other one. Up. And uh, now what actually happens is one arm comes up and then you can see how my wrist kind of drops down as, and I'm now going flat down to here. As I come down, this one is going to come up. When I get to the extremes, I change my hands. I flip my hands and they change. And I flip my hands and they change. Flip, change. Flip, change, flip, change, yeah? One of the things to watch out for is that you don't, when you're coming up here, that you don't kind of like dive down with that arm. Now if I go back a little bit, just make sure you can see here, you don't want to be leading down with your fingers here, you're leading down with that wrist so that you've got the hand flat as if you're up against a wall. Last thing of all, we'll go over all of these a little bit more next week. I bring out a new video every week, as I said earlier, so make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. And um, yeah, so that you get notification every time I bring out a new video. We'll go over this in a little bit more detail again, but we're going to turn this hand, the wrist. The hands stay long, the fingers stay long, my thumb's tucked in, and I'm going all the way around. I'll give you a little bit more teaching on this next week, as I say. Okay, let's put on some beautiful music. This is a nice way of cooling down as well. And we'll just work with these fabulous arms. So let's start off by taking this arm away from your body.
next time for little for some new moves as I say we'll do some beautiful hand ripples we'll do some undulations we'll do lots more nice sharp hips we'll shimmy we'll go through everything see you next week <laughs>